Hello, and welcome to the CA ArcServe High Availability Technical Video Series Full System Failover to Amazon EC2. New in CA ArcServe Replication and High Availability Release 16, CA ArcServe Replication and High Availability provides Full System Replication to the Cloud and Full System Failover to the Cloud. Full System High Availability can protect your mission critical servers by providing robust real time replication and host monitoring and failover to an offline Amazon EC2 instance in the cloud. CA ArcServe Replication and High Availability offers several benefits for replication and failover to the Amazon EC2 cloud. Users can replicate data to and from Amazon EC2 cloud, eliminates the need to purchase and maintain replica server hardware, there's no need to maintain the replica application and OS licenses at the customer site, and it eliminates the need for costly dedicated DR data centers and the associated hardware, software, real estate, power, cooling, and management overhead. Here is a high-level diagram of the components needed for full system failover to the cloud. The master server exists at the on-premise network and the replica server exists on the Amazon EC2 cloud. When the master physical host running on a private network goes down or the user initiates manual switchover, the replica EC2 host will be started in the Amazon EC2 cloud to take over the master's role. After failover, a new recovery instance will appear on the Amazon console with the same name as the master server so that it is convenient for identification and accessibility. The CA ArcServe RHA Manager now provides a new Cloud View tab on the Manager toolbar. The Cloud View allows basic EC2 management and monitoring functions to be performed directly from the RHA Manager. Once you have defined your Amazon AWS account settings, you may create instances, start, stop, reboot, or delete instances, or perform other basic administrative tasks to manage your cloud instances for ArcServe replication and high availability. There are several prerequisites required to use full system failover to the cloud. This technical overview assumes that the following prerequisites have been met. You have created an account with Amazon Web Services AWS. You have configured VPC, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, and have created the VPN connection between the on-premise network, where the master servers reside, and the VPC. An EC2 instance has been created in the Amazon EC2. This instance will be your replica server. Once the prerequisites have been met, the first step to protecting your server with full system high availability to Amazon EC2 is to create a new scenario. To do this from the CA ArcSer Replication and High Availability Manager console, we launch the Scenario Creation Wizard. Choose Create a New Scenario, and if desired, enter a new scenario group or choose an existing scenario group. In this case, we are creating a new group named FSHA to EC2, and we'll click Next. The Scenario Creation Wizard then continues and you now select the server type and product type. We will choose Full System and then select High Availability Scenario HA. Note, the tasks on the replica options should be none. The integrity testing for a sure recovery option is not available for Full System HA scenarios with Amazon EC2. Once you've selected the server type and HA options, click Next and now we must define the master and replica host for the full system HA scenario. Under the master setting, enter a scenario name. Here we enter full system to Amazon EC2. Enter the master host name or IP address. The default port of 25,000 will also be used. Under the replica setting section, we will select from the server type drop-down list, Amazon EC2. The virtual platform hostname will automatically populate with the ec2.amazonaws.com hostname. We then click on the ellipsis browse button under the application hostname field and select the cloud instance that was previously created as one of the prerequisites to a full system scenario. Once you click the browse button, the cloud instance selection window appears. Verify that the correct cloud provider, cloud account, and region are selected. Select from the cloud instance that you wish to use as the replica host from the resulting list of instances available. Note, choosing an instance requires that certain prerequisites are met. You must have previously defined an Amazon Web Services account, configured the Amazon VPC connection to the cloud, and you must create an instance in the cloud. Click OK to continue. Once you have selected the instance to use as the application host name, replica, you can optionally choose to enable the control service DNS settings. It is recommended in most cases to enable this option by checking the box. Click Next to continue. 
The Scenario Creation Wizard now performs an engine verification on both the master server and replica server that were previously defined in the wizard. If the engine is not installed, you may install the engine to both hosts by clicking the Install button. In this case, our engine is installed on both hosts and we will click Next to continue. The Volume Settings screen appears. Since we are choosing to protect our server with a full system scenario, the default settings are normally used. You can view the information about the volume selected on the right side of the window. In this case, we will protect the C drive, which has a total size of 15 GB, and free space of approximately 2 GB. We will not exclude any files or directories. Click Next to continue. The Scenario Properties screen appears. You may expand each property section to review the default values. To properly protect a server, you should ensure that the replication mode is set to online and run after reboot is on. These are the default values and we can click next to continue. On the master and replica property screen you will see master properties on the left side of the window and replica properties on the right side of the window. Verify that the correct IP addresses are entered in the host connection section. Verify that the spool settings on both master and replica correctly configured for your environment. In most cases, the default values are acceptable. You can also review the virtual machine platform settings and EC2 instant type values. You should choose an EC2 instance type that is appropriate for the server you are protecting. Guidelines for choosing EC2 instances can be found on Amazon's AWS site. Click Next to continue. A verification of the scenario properties and collection switchover information will now take place. The process may take a few moments. Once the collection of switchover properties has completed, you will see the switchover properties window. It is important at this step that you must define the value for the physical network mappings. Click in the field to open the network mappings dialog window. The network mapping window will appear. Click the drop down arrow for the replica network adapter and select an available subnet from the drop down list. These are the subnets previously defined when setting up your Amazon EC2 cloud account. Click OK to close the Network Adapter Mapping window and return to the Scenario Creation window, then click Next. Switchover options now appear. In most cases, it's recommended to choose Switchover manually as the Switchover Initiation method when replicating and switching over to the cloud. Click Next to continue. The Scenario Creation Wizard will now perform a pre-flight check and verification of your scenario properties. If you received warnings, the scenario will be able to start. However, you should resolve any warnings identified. If you received any errors in this scenario, it will not start, and you must resolve any error conditions before the scenario will start. In this case, we have neither warnings or errors, and we'll click Next to continue. The Scenario Run screen now appears. This screen allows you to review the scenario settings defined during the scenario creation. Click Run now to start the scenario. The Scenario Creation Wizard will close and return you to the CA ArcServe RHA Manager windows. You should see in the Events portion of the window that the scenario is starting and synchronization is starting. The graphical status will indicate that synchronization is running from the active master host to the standby replica EC2 cloud instance. As synchronization continues, you will see additional status events appearing in the Events portion of the window. You may change the statistic view from graphical to the replica standby host and view additional statistics and progress of synchronization. As you see here on the right side of the screen, the data sent is 3.22 gigabytes and the data to be sent is 10.42 gigabytes with a current progress of 30%. Overall synchronization send process is 14.3%. Synchronization is running and will take some time to complete. The amount of time required is dependent upon the size of the source volume, the bandwidth available, and the change rate of the source while synchronization is running. Once the synchronization process has completed, you will see two messages in the event portion of the window. First, synchronization is finished. This indicates that the volume has been fully synchronized to the master. Second is, all modifications during synchronization period are replicated. This indicates that any changes made to the master while the synchronization process was running were captured by the CA ArcServe RHA real-time replication engine and those changes have been sent to the replica. You will see the synchronization arrow has now changed to an arrow indicating that the replication is now active and the isAlive arrow pointing toward the active host is now showing. This isAlive arrow indicates that the master host is now being monitored by the replica server. From this point forward, your master server is protected and can be failed over to the Amazon EC2 instance of the cloud. This presentation is now complete. Thanks for watching, and for more information about CA ArcServe high availability, visit arcserve.com slash products.